Hello everyone, Ben here with a solo game of Viceroy. So the setup in Viceroy, or the solo game anyway, is practically the same as the normal game. Uh, you have your 48 cards of the deck, which basically dictate the 12 turns, so 4 cards a turn. You've got your lore cards and your small deck of extra character cards. Uh, you have four cards, or four character cards I should say, to choose from. Uh, and then you basically pick two of them, which is what I've gone for here. Uh, one of them goes into your pyramid uh, as your starting card, and then one of them goes back into your hand, and you get the reward of your starting card. So in this case, uh, it's your choice of either a lore card or a character card from a small deck, and we'll probably go for, uh, I think, another character card. We've got several lore cards anyway, so we'll grab the Pathfinder. Okay, and he goes into your hand, and then you also get three lore cards into your starting hand, and uh, two of each colour of gem, so two reds, two blues, two greens, two yellows, and you basically discard two of them at random to leave you with six uh, left. The two discarded gems go into the... Uh, players pool of gems so normally it's four gems of each color per player so in a solo game you would have just the four of each color and then the two discarded ones from your personal pool will go into that area as well and then the various tokens for the game uh, the game goes through 12 rounds and each round is uh, an auction phase and then a building phase. So very simple and straightforward. And the AI in the solo game basically only shows up during the auction phase, uh, which we will see in just a second. So you need your four cards per round. Okay. And then basically you do a bid. So you would decide which card you want uh, and pick a colour from it from your personal pool. Uh, let's have a look then. So if we get the first mate out, go there, it's a nice yellow uh, corner card, and it gives us some more gems, that's pretty handy. So maybe, well there aren't any that have yellow on the bottom. Okay, that's a bit of a shame. Uh, this has green on the corner which would match up, and it would give us more gems. Yeah, okay, I like the uh, look of that one. So we'll bid for that one. So basically, you take the relevant gem, as indicated by the uh, colour, and you would hold it in your hand, but because uh, we are the only player, we can just place it out in the open. So we have bid on red, with our red gem, and then the AI will, from the all the remaining uh, tokens that are left, all the colour gems that are left, you would draw one at random, and hopefully don't get the same colour. So, and we have blue. Okay. So the AI would then basically bid on the blue card and would discard this one. If it was the same colour as your own, this would then be a tie. And if there was only one card in the column, then you would both be at, well, you would essentially be out of luck and you'd have to discard your gem and go round again. Uh, the AI does not really care about your suffering, unfortunately, and will quite happily uh, force you to discard gems uh, quite a number of times. Uh, anyway, so this gem will go back into uh, the leftover pool for the AI, as will the card go into just a basic discard pile, and then your gem will go back into the, uh, the player pool, as it were, over there with your card into your hand. So let's see, make a bit of room there. Okay. And then the ones that didn't get bid on and discarded will simply move up into the second chance uh, row there. And they may get taken next turn, but more than likely they'll probably just get discarded out of the game. Uh, but that's getting a bit of a head of ourselves. So now we have the building phase and you get three chances to build cards 
and normally you would just basically uh, do a build then it would go round uh, the table to each player and then you'd go a second time but because you're on the solo player you can just basically do one after the other so I did say we're going to try and get the first mate out so that is going to cost us a red gem because it's on the bottom level but the reward for it is we get three of our color or three of our color choice back so we could use maybe uh, another red yeah I think at least one red and what are we going to build next possibly that which would require a green so if we get a green gem okay and then one more uh, maybe a blue okay so that was our uh, entirety of our reward and then we'll do our second build and we will build the factor like so and that is going to require a green gem so we'll pay that and we get four gems back as a reward so uh, well two more reds I think and possibly uh, a yellow at least anyway and another blue so that was our four back so that was one build two build and then we have a third one and we'll probably go for the pathfinder now who can quite handily go up there so that will first of all cost a red and a yellow because he's on the second level of the pyramid now uh, the cost for building a cumulative so red and yellow brings him up to the second level but you do get the second level reward which in this case is a scroll and we have a handy player aid so this shield would basically cover up your gems and various tokens to conceal them from other players but we can have it all out in the open but it does have on the back of it uh, a very nice uh, summary of what all the tokens do so basically magic tokens are simply scored at the end of the game so magic tokens defense tokens are end of game points really science tokens possibly help you during the game when if you pass uh, attack tokens are also end of game tokens but they can also be useful when trying to win bids uh, basically you get to bid first and snipe cars from other players uh, defense tokens are useful for end of game points however obviously they're not useful for defending because you have another players that you're defending against and likewise attack tokens are really only useful for sniping out cards that the AI might uh, try and bid against you with because at the end of the game you're not going to be attacking any of the players it will just be yourself so we probably won't go for many of those tokens but uh, scroll tokens magic tokens are very useful for end of game points so we'll grab one of those and that was our three bit our three builds so we need definitely some more cards I think we're running low on character cards anyway and we have a new round so round two with the handy marker and we get four more cards out and we need a new auction so all uh, right so if we can get something to cover the yellow circle here maybe we do have a law card we could certainly put in that place which would cover that up wouldn't help with building a circle up here but we can't have everything that would get us a lot of gems or basically allow us to grab a character for free okay well we'll have a think about that uh, as for the auction then if we're looking at getting uh, these magic tokens this regent if placed in the second row would allow us to get points for magic tokens so maybe him then uh, yeah okay so if we go for a yellow gem as a bid then and the AI is going to get a blue okay so the Enchantress is going to get discarded and 
the relevant tokens go back to their various pools. So we got we have a choice. Basically, we can either get the general or the regent because they are in the yellow uh, column. Uh, we will go for the regent. So that was our card. And then the ones that were in the second chance area but didn't get bought will just get discarded now from the game. And the ones in the first chance get slid up. Okay. So now we need to do building and we have... Well, I could probably hold off on the secret combinations just for the moment uh, because we don't really have any characters we want to immediately grab from the auction. So we'll hold off on that. So basically we would like to get the region out and get points for magic tokens. Uh, we have trade permissions which allow us to gain extra points for single color circles. And we wouldn't be doing too badly on those, we'd have at least two of those, so maybe we could get this one out. And we also have Common Law Marriage, which wants us to be surrounded by character cards. So if we could get that in somewhere as well. Okay, so if we do a single, well the first build which will be Trade Permissions, and we'll place that there. So Law cards you don't have to spend gems for. They simply just get built into your pyramid uh, for free. So that will be points at the end of the game. Then we do the regent. So the regent could go there or could go there. Either way, that's going to be a yellow gem. Uh, let's try that one, probably. Yeah, OK. Well, now we'll try that, and we'll see if we can't get a uh, a card in the middle which matches up these various colours. Uh, probably a bit difficult, but we might get lucky, you never know. So we'll do that, and we'll grab ourselves a yellow gem for that, and we need to pay a red and a green. So we do just have about those ones, which gets us on the card a relevant token which now states that all magic uh, scrolls are worth two points or plus two points so basically just two points a the moment they could be worth even more if you get even more of these uh, so that was our second build we do have a third one but i think we can probably just pass and hold off on that for the time being so we will leave it at that and we'll go into the next round so round three so more cards for the auction Okay, are there any colour combinations that match up? The armourer doesn't look too bad. It would at least allow us to go in there. So we'd have two of the three colours matched. And we would get uh, a blue gem out of it. Uh, unfortunately, to build it would require a green. And we don't have green at the moment. And to bid on it would require a green. And we don't have green at the moment. We have plenty of blue. Uh, right, so maybe we might want to try and do the secret uh, combinations then to uh, to put this out somewhere and get the armourer in the relevant place. Okay. So, failing that then, what else could we bid on? Well, we've got enough blue we could bid on the witch, uh, which if we build down here We'll get us started on a blue circle, and it will also get us some more gems. So I think we'll bid on the witch. So we'll do a blue, and we'll go for the witch. And we need, from the bowl, not a blue. Okay, it's the green. Uh, right, that is a shame, because that is basically going to take away our armourer. Well, okay, fair enough. So basically, uh, if there is a choice between cards the AI's choice will be the first pick of the cards. So that will get discarded. Uh, we do get our card, however. So these get back. So we get the witch. And then the various ones get shuffled around. Okay. 
So then we need, so for our first build, well, the secret combinations that we're going to use to get the armor is now slightly less powerful. We might be able to grab the butcher or the mercenary. Uh, if we can build the mercenary somewhere, would that be useful? Well, the second row will get us another scroll, but not much good with completing circles, so maybe not. The butcher on the first row would get us a scroll, so more points there. Well, no, I think we'll still hold off on using the, uh, the secret combinations, and instead we'll simply build the witch. So we need to spend a blue, we have those in abundance. And we can get back three of our choice. Uh, let's go for uh, a green, because we don't have any greens. Well, maybe a second green and then a red. So kind of guesswork for the future there, really. Okay, so that was our first build. I think now is probably a good time to go for the common law marriage. Now we could place it there, it doesn't particularly get us any colour combinations, but it will be surrounded by cards for end of game points. However, we could place it here, again, no colour combinations. Uh, well, we have left a gap over here, we're not really filling it to the best of our ability, I think. So, sure, we'll put the, uh, the common law marriage in there. It's a bit of a shame, we probably would have liked to fill it with something that benefited us more with the colour combinations, but more points is always nice. So, yep, we'll go with that. So that was our second build. We do still have the secret combinations for our third build, but I think we'll just leave that as it is, and we'll go into round number four. So we need more cards. So... The recruiter looks nice. That would be a low-level build which allows us to get more points for scrolls. Captain would be nice. That allows us to get more cards. We are running short on cards and options, basically. Commander is a lot of gems. And the assassin. Again, this is potentially swords, which we're not going to have much use for in the solo game. So we'll probably leave that one out. And focus on maybe the captain and get another card. Not the best use of the gems, I'm afraid. Well, if we bid on him with a green, and actually if we put him on the third level, then we could spend a blue, a green, and a yellow. That would boost up to the third level, and that would get us another magic scroll out. That's certainly doable. Not entirely sure it's worth the return, though. Uh, I suspect we could probably get scrolls by placing cards lower down, which will uh, cost less gems. But still, if we spend a green to bid on him, we can use a green to put him out, and that would at least get us another card. So we'll go with that. So we'll bid a green, and we'll try and get the captain. The AI is going to discard the commander. It's fine. So that is returned as is ours. So let's see, we, we got the captain. Uh, these ones are discarded. These ones got to second chance. So we have the captain. We may as well build him now. Uh, so he's going to cost us a green to build. And we could place him. Uh, probably over here. And then we'll get our choice of the card back, so we'll go with another character card for some more options. Infiltrator, okay. So he might be nice then as our second build to place down here. Yep, which gets us, so it costs us a blue, but it gets us four gems back. So I think two blues and two greens to round out our pool. And we still have the secret combinations, and the only ones that are available are the recruiter, or the assassin. Again, the assassins I'm not too fussed about. 
Uh, no, I don't think they're a cruiser just yet. Nope. So we'll leave secret combinations again as for the time being. Uh, we've got quite a number of cards in the bottom of the level of our pyramid, but not ones further up, so we'll have to start worrying about that somewhat uh, for the next round. So, five. Well, that champion looks nice for the colour combinations anyway. Uh, yeah, that's pretty handy. So that would fit in nicely here. And it would get us five gems back. Steeplejack would be useful for more scrolls, at least on the lower level anyway. Uh, okay, so I think we'll bid on the champion. So we'll spend a blue, we'll bid on the champion, and the AI will... Red? Okay, well, not too accommodating. I think we might have gone for the Steeplejack uh, later, but fine. That is that. So champion will get put up, and then these ones will get discarded. Nope, not yet. Getting ahead of myself. Uh, right, so we could build the champion now. It's going to cost us two, well, two gems, so red and a blue. And we place that there, so that is a blue gem back, which is very handy. And we get five back as per the placement. So again, if we want to round out our pool somewhat, we could use a couple of blues, uh, a couple of reds, and then a yellow. Okie dokie. So that was a first build. I think if we do the secret combinations now, and we try and grab maybe the scout because that would allow us to get another card if we put it in the second row and we could use some more cards so sure we'll place the secret combinations out unfortunately we won't get anything for the placement and we get to basically replace uh, any character card in the auction with this one uh, or take four gemstones or we have enough gemstones at the moment so we'll simply put the secret combinations back there and grab the scout so now we could build the scout and we will do so with two yellows so that goes there again no color combinations but can't have everything well maybe not there uh, maybe we'll place it there so this one is pretty much ruined anyway because it's a yellow and a blue but uh, this one at least is now two reds, so we might be able to put another red here. Uh, and it's still the second level, so we do get another card, and we'll grab a character card. Maybe a lore card, see if we can't get some more points. Uh, well, that will get, allow us to get more lore cards. Okay, so that is fine. We'll leave that for the time being. And we need to go into round six. So I don't think we're doing too badly. Uh, we could use a few more cards on top of this common law marriage to get it completely surrounded. Uh, we are, I think we're doing okay on single colour circles for the trade permissions, but we maybe could use some infinite gemstones. So if any of those pop up, we might try and grab those. Uh, right. At the moment then, there don't look to be any... Nope. Although the fence will be nice for scrolls. Forest will be nice for scrolls. Uh, possibly the Forester. We do have the available gems to place them out on the second row. Although the first row would get us the scroll. Second row would get us the uh, circle combination though. Okay. Again, Admiral only gets us the scroll in the first row. So maybe the fence then for the uh, more points per scrolls in the second row at least although that does require two yellow gems and we do not have two yellow gems right well i think we'll still go for the fencer and we'll see if we can't scrounge up some more gems at some point anyway 
So we'll bid a green. We have plenty of those anyway. And the AI is going to be blue. Okay, so being fairly accommodating so far. Not too bad. So if we build the fencer now for... Ah, no, two yellows. We can't build it just yet. So uh, we'll have to hold off on the fencer then. That's fine, that's not a problem. We'll have plenty more builds that we can actually then we can actually put cars out, so that's not a problem. Uh, if we build new laws and we'll place it up here, so not only does it not cost us anything uh, in the third row, that's not a problem, but it also starts surrounding common law marriage with more cards, so that has to be character cards. Alright, not the best place then. Well, Failing that, it could go on this first row for free, but it's going to go anywhere for free anyway. Well, we'll put it there, and we might be able to get a, a red colour combination up there anyway. So we get to draw three cards from the law deck, and then we have to discard two of them. Okay, so one, two, three. Alright, so... That would require us to put gems from our hand onto the card and we get points for it later on could be useful does require us to give up gems we do have some of those in uh, abundance anyway that would be another one similar to the common law marriage okay and the secret service is number of cards and this is card okay we don't have many from our hand anyway to do that so i think we'll get rid of the secret service and probably the people's quorum uh, simply because I don't think those will see much use to be honest and we'll keep stronger royal treasury and could build it now is it worth building it now again that needs to be character cards really uh, we'll hold off on the time being on the royal treasury there's no immediate rush to get it placed out uh, so we can leave it for the timing, I think. And that will conclude our build. So these should have actually slid up. I completely forgot. So this is going to be round seven. So just over halfway. Uh, we do have the Brigand, who would fit very nicely in this area here, and that would get us more gems, which would solve our yellow problem that we have with the Fencer, so that might not be too bad, actually. Um, that would be an infinite red, that would be very handy, infinite gemstones, incredibly useful for building, but nowhere particularly good to place them, unfortunately. So, might hold off him here, we might be able to snag him... Uh, from the second chance auction. A noble would be infinite blues. I think the brigand is quite nice. We'll go for the brigand and we'll see how that works out. So we need a bit of blue. Okay, and the, the green. Oh well, okay, fair enough. The AI is going to take the noble, unfortunately. We do get the Brigand, however. So that was the auction, and then... Not yet. So the Brigand can now be placed quite handily here for a green and a yellow. It does allow us to get a yellow, a green back, so that's extra handy. And then we get five gems of our choice, two of which are definitely going to be yellows, because we'll need them for the Fencer. It might get built now, actually, possibly there. Although on the second row would be more handy. Uh, right. So if we're going to build him on the second row, we need two yellows. So probably another yellow at least spare. And then two more gems. Uh, we'll go for a green and uh, another... Well, another green. So basically three yellows and two greens to make up to the five. Uh, right, first build, second build. Well, if we put 
the stronger royal treasury down here for free. Yep, okay, let's try that. And then we can put a, some gemstones, so we'll do one red, maybe a green, two reds and a blue, so we'll do four. Okay, two reds, a blue and a green. We'll do that. So that is four gemstones at least, and that will be eight more points uh, at least at the end of the game for that. So that's not too bad. And then I think our third build, so it's a bit wasteful on colours unfortunately, but it does get us, so spending two yellows to place it there, it does get us another scrolls are worth two points uh, token. So now scrolls are worth a total of four points. So we need some more scrolls and probably some more scrolls plus points uh, tokens, I think. Okay, so on to round eight. Uh, no scrolls on the bottom layers. That's an infinite red gem on the second level. That would be another card on the bottom level. That's quite handy, as is the Inspector. Uh, and the ones we missed out on at the top, so the Colonel or the Corporal. So Infinite Red if we build it. Infinite Red if we build it on the second level. So basically, I think the Colonel is probably not too bad. Uh, although it would cost us a red to bid on it, and then a red to build it, and we wouldn't have enough reds. The Huntress would cost us a blue to bid on it, and then a green and a yellow to build it. Uh, we don't, however, have... Well, we have one spot here on a level 2, but basically we're now kind of into level 3 territory, or continuing to expand our, our level 1 area of the pyramid. Uh, the Inspector would go to another card, and we could use that, as does the Chieftain on the bottom level. Uh, maybe the Chieftain then? Yep, bit on it was red, but it was green. Uh, okay, we'll try that then. So we'll bid red for the Chieftain. And... Oh, well, it had to happen sooner or later. So basically this means that uh, if there was a single card there, then... Uh, both of us would be out of luck and we'd have to discard our tokens. Uh, there are two cards, fortunately, so we are slightly better in luck. Uh, the AI will get first pick and it will go for the Chieftain as its uh, preferred card. We get second pick and we will go for the uh, Colonel. Uh, right, well the kernel isn't really what we wanted. It does give us that infinite red gem, but we do have to build it still. So, uh, we could... Well, we're going to have to save it then. So we are going to skip a build phase, which isn't the worst thing in the world. Chances are you're probably going to have to skip one or two, uh, depending on the game and how quickly you build cards. But that's okay. So we do get to push these up. So slightly more cards go up than before. We are into round nine. We do need more cards for the auction. Uh, right. Well, we are limited to bidding on yellow, green, or blue. And we ideally want something that, when placed out, will get us a lot more gems. So the Poisoner. Yep, we could just about do that, I think. The Flag Bearer, slightly better. A few less gems, but a few more points. So probably the Flag Bearer, I suspect. Uh, we do have a reasonable place for it at right at the end of our uh, pyramid area. There is no limit to the amount of cards you can have on the bottom row. So basically you can expand your pyramid as far off as pretty much your table will allow. However, you are only allowed five levels up of your pyramid. So we're definitely not quite there yet at the moment. Uh, I think the flag bearer is probably a reasonable option. So bit of yellow for that, and the AI is going to 
Ah, okay. Uh, right, well. Uh, oops, so one yellow goes back to main supply, one goes back to AI supply. So the AI will get the flag bearer. We will grab the inspector, uh, which gets us a card at least, but unfortunately it does require a yellow to build, and we have no yellows. So, okay. These ones need to go out, these ones need to go up. It might very well be then that we end up passing for the next auction. We can't build any of those. No, we can't build any of those at the moment. So yes, we might have to pass for the next auction. So round 10 for more cards. Oh, the Viceroy is quite handy. It's one of the uh, promo cards, I believe. So we could pass, in which case we wouldn't uh, get a chance to bid, but we would get tokens back. So the number of tokens you get is basically three tokens plus the, any um, science tokens you have uh, on your cards, and they give you an extra gem when you pass. Uh, right, so we would get three gems. We don't have any science tokens. Nope, no science tokens. So we would get just three gems if we pass, or we could bid and grab uh, the Berserker, but then we couldn't build him. Or we couldn't bid on the Artificer. Uh, we could bid on the Castellan, but then we couldn't build them either. So I think passing is probably a reasonable idea at this point, simply to give us gem options. So if we pass and we get three gems, and one of them is definitely going to be red to build the Colonel. Uh, one of them will be a yellow to build the Inspector. And then we'll go for a second, second yellow. Okay, so that was our three gems for passing, so no auction phase. Uh, the AI does still grab a card, I believe. So it's a blue. So these will go out, and these go up. So now we get to build as normal, and we do have gems to build with, so definitely the kernel's going to go out somewhere. So we'll spend a red, and we'll just put it there for a second, because he's going to go on the first level, uh, probably over here with what space we have remaining. And the reason I'm saving the red is because the red now goes on the card to remind yourself that you have an infinite gem. So these are used once per turn. So that would include all three builds and you can only use them for building. And they basically reduce the cost of a single build by that particular color gem. So if the inspector, for example, required uh, red at level 1 to build, you could basically put him out for free. Uh, he would get a 1 red discount as per your 1 infinite gem. But then that would be used up for your single build, and then other subsequent builds for that turn would then still cost their usual price. Uh, but we can put the inspector out, and we can do it on the second level. Uh, although, if we can put him out on the third level, we do actually have several green... Uh, circles completed. So we have one there, and yep, there's one there. With a possibility of some more if we can get the right cards. So actually, yes, I think we'll probably do that. We'll leave us a bit short on gems and cards, but I think it's a worthwhile trade-off, or at least I hope it is. So it's going to cost two yellows and a green now to build on the third level. Uh, so those will go back, and we need to get this, which shows that uh, single greens are now going to be worth two points at the end of the game, and it's another card which surrounds common law marriage, so that's uh, doubly good. does leave us very few gems for the next round, though. Okay, so... 11 and we have so we want to try and fill in a few more green gem spots if we can or failing that uh, accumulate green gems that we can then place out at the end of the game uh, well and we also have a red for building so the sergeant we can't bid on him though uh, that's unfortunate maybe another pass might have gotten ourselves into a bit of a hole here 
So we could bid on the Chancellor and not build him, or we could bid on the Guard and not build him. Although the Guard would, us al would allow us to get another um, Magic Scroll out if we can build him on the first level. So possibly... Uh, no cards which have... Uh, green circles at the bottom of them to fill in the top here. We might get lucky for the last one, it's possible. Uh, we might just pass again, unfortunately. Well, if we pass again, we get three gems. We then need to figure out what card we might bid on next turn from these lot. Excuse me a second. Well, none of them are particularly good for placement. Uh, the Baron possibly might be nice for scrolls. And it does require red to build, and we do get a red discount. So he's going to require red to bid on. So we'll grab a red as one of our three. Uh, a yellow and another red. So those are the three gems we picked up for passing. The AI, of course, is now going to draw a red. And... Well, of course it is. Uh, right, so that is going to get rid of the Baron for us. Uh, well, there we go. So that's that plan out the window. Uh, we don't have anything to build, so we'll skip building. And we'll go into final round. So nothing with green at the bottom to fill out these slots, unfortunately. The governor would allow us to get four more gems and they could all be greens, so that might be worth it, as would the pixie. Uh, let's have a look. So we could bid yellow, we could bid green. On the third level, uh, the gunner would allow us another card, as would the warlord. More points for scrolls, for the governor. Uh, an infinite green for the pixie. Okay. And then we have chancellor, which is more points. Guard, which is points at the third level for red circles. How many of those do we have? Uh, none, is the short answer. Okay, well, that solves that one. And then the sergeant... So we could possibly get something in the second level, but it wouldn't really help much. Nothing on the third level would complete a particular colour combination in our favour. We could probably just about do a red, but that would only get us a red gem and no extra points for it. Uh, so something on the third level here maybe, which gets us lots of extra gems. There are none of those cards around. So it looks like we're relegated to building something on the the first level, which will get us a lot of extra gems, which can be green gems we can then use to get uh, green circles filled out. Okay, so probably the governor then, or the pixie, so yellow or green, and then building it with a blue, basically. Uh, yeah, that looks about the best uh, of a bad bunch, really. So we'll try that. Uh, if we bid yellow, then either way we're going to get the Pixie, which will get us gems at the bottom, or the Sergeant, which will get us gems at the bottom. Uh, Governor will get us gems, or the Guard will get us a scroll, which is worth four points. So I think the Pixie is probably the better option, or at least those two anyway. So we'll go for Bid Yellow, and the air will hopefully Bid Red this time. So the Warlord is out, uh, and the Pixie uh, we will grab, so that was our yellow, and we'll build it with a blue on the bottom level. We do have a space over here, so that's fine, and we get four. Did we spend the blue to build it? I don't believe so, so we'll spend the blue now to build it, and we get four gems back, and they may as well all be greens. Uh, do we have? Yep, we have another green here. So that is that. And that would pretty much be... So, game over at the moment. So we've done our builds, all our available builds anyway. 
So now we have a final chance to cover up, or paint as it's called, coloured circles for possible end of game points. So we may as well do uh, that one, I believe, that one, that one, and this one over here. Any others we could do? Oh, okay, so we're one green over. Well, never mind, that's not too bad. All right, and then we go into final score. So we do have a handy pad. So, and there is a score summary at the, uh, the back of the rule book. So let's have a look. All right. So it says for each, so you do single colours first, and we get uh, bonus points, and we do have one which gives us bonus points. So let's see if I can do this left-handed, shall we? So we have a so we have a single here, which is worth two because the card at the top is uh, on level two. So two, four, six. 8, 10, 12, 14, and then that would be 17. So base of 17. This is going to be incredibly fiddly trying to do it left handed. Excuse my appalling. All right, there we go. And then we get two points or plus two points for greens. So we have an extra 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12. So that is going to be. Uh, 29, let's see if I can make that. Okay, that's probably legible. 29. Uh, no, that's terrible. Okay, that's a bit better. Right, so 29 for single colours. We have uh, infinite gemstones. So we have one. Yep, we have the one infinite gemstone for the kernel. So again, we get uh, one point because it's just on level one. Uh, in its entirety, so that is just a single point. That's not too good. Never mind. Uh, we get points for lore cards. So I think we have trade permissions gives us points, and common law marriage gives us points. Just those two. Oh, and we have the uh, uh, strong royal treasury. That was it that gives us points as well. So for this one, we'll start from left to right. We get uh, two points per gemstone still on the card. So this is going to be worth eight for that. So, eight, good. Uh, common or marriage, we get two points for each uh, character card surrounding it, and adjacent basically means is it touching it. So, one, two, three, four, five. Uh, two a piece gives us ten, so that is eighteen. And uh, is that a point or two points? I can't quite make that out. A point. Okay, so extra point for each of our single color circles and infinite gems. So again, we have one, uh, let's do it this way around one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, uh, nine for the infinite. So that is a further nine, brings us to 27 again. Or 27, yep, 27. Good, okay. Then we have uh, points on cards, so any cards which may have given you points, uh, which are these ones, you would simply place out on the card and then tie them all up at the end. We have nothing for those, we haven't been really bothering for that. Uh, we have magic scrolls, magic scroll points, yep. So we have one magic scroll there, and it is worth four points I believe. Yep, just the four. Okay, so that's four points for that. We have uh, sets of icons. So this is everything but uh, swords, basically. So every magic scroll, every shield, and every cog. Uh, a set of those will get you 12 points. Uh, we have no sets. And you can only use them once. So basically, uh, you would get points only per unique set. Uh, so we have nothing for that, and then you would lose points if opponents had swords which you did not uh, defend against with shields, basically. But as it is a solo game, we aren't fussed about that, 
So swords and shields, unless you're going for a set collection, they're not too valuable in the solo game. Uh, so again, nothing for that. And then we tally up, so we have 29, 30, 57, 61, I believe. 30, 37, yep, I think that's 61. Okay, so that is a final score. Okay, so there is no uh, chart to check your progress. Basically, you just get a score, and then next time round, you try and get a better score and chart your progress that way. But yeah, uh, that was a solo game of Viceroy. I hope you enjoyed it, and I will see you next time.